The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 1 Peter 1, 3 to 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In God's great mercy, He has caused us to be born again into a living hope because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now we hope for the blessings God has for His children. These blessings, which cannot be destroyed or be spoiled, or lose their beauty are kept in heaven for you. 1 Corinthians 2 9. But as it is written in the scriptures, no one has ever seen this, and no one has ever heard about it. No one has ever imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. 2 Peter 1 3 to 4. Jesus called us by His glory and goodness. Through these, He gave us the very great and precious promises. With these gifts, you can share in being like God, and the world will not ruin you with its evil desires. Psalm 37, 34. Wait for the Lord's help and follow Him. He will honor you and give you the land, and you will see the wicked sent away. Before we uh, start our uh, daily Bible study today, as it is our custom, may I ask all of you, our subscribers, our followers, our fellow believers, to pause for a moment by putting yourselves in the presence of God. Let us set aside all our problems, worries in life, negative thoughts for the next half hour or so. We need concentration while we assimilate God's truths. So if you are a believer, name, acknowledge, confess. Homo lugeo, the Greek word says. Admit your personal sins that you committed today. Confess them directly and privately to God the Father. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But for you, unbeliever, the issue you face is not confessing your sins. It is faith alone in Christ alone. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Therefore, let us pray. We consider it a privilege, Heavenly Father, to have the freedom and the opportunity of fellowshipping with you and your word. We thank you for bringing us this time in this assembly today to take in your truths which we badly need in our spiritual life. We now pray that God the Holy Spirit will enlighten us, guide us, motivate and challenge us to what we're going to study today. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Hi everyone, fellow believers and our subscribers. Welcome once again. 
to our daily Bible study. Today we have a new topic to take up, and it is God's wonderful plan for man. Okay, I repeat, the title of our lesson is God's wonderful plan for man. First of all, for us, we love America. Do you? We love America because this is now our home, right? And besides, God has put us here in America for a purpose. This country, America, undoubtedly the greatest nation in the world, is God's geographical will for us. You may have come from any foreign country, but America now is your home, right? Can you not imagine the suffering and hardships faced by our countrymen back home? The devaluation of our peso in that country and how they wished they could find a way to come to the United States? And can you not imagine how blessed we are to be enjoying the tremendous economic prosperity and prestige that America currently enjoys in a country which is a client nation to God. Life without America, therefore, would be a radical change because of what I just said, the tremendous economic prosperity and prestige of America. However, as believers in Christ, and as we keep going in our spiritual life, we need some absolute anchors of the soul, those things that do not change in our lives. Is there anything that never ever changes? Absolutely. Now what are the things that never change? Number one, God's character. God's character will never, ever change. Malachi 3, 6 says, I, the Lord, do not change. Do you know what? The immutability of God is an island of stability. It is a reality that guarantees that no matter what happens this year and next year and in the years to come, God's grace will be available to provide for our needs. God's unchanging love is always available even during the worst changes in history. Jeremiah 31.3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Number two, God's word will never ever change. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass withereth and the flowers fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. You know what? The Bible is timeless. Not only timeless, enduring. Not only enduring, it is eternal. That means the doctrines, the reproofs, the corrections, the instructions and promises that we will need to live this year and the years to come will be available, like I said, as an island of stability. The Bible continues to be the most published and distributed book on this planet. No book has been more criticized, more judged, more ridiculed, more banned, more burned than the Bible. And yet, it is still available and will be as fresh and relevant at all times as it has been in the last two millenniums. Number three, God's purpose for our lives will never ever change. Psalm 33, 11 says, his plans endure forever. His purposes last eternally. 
You see, God absolutely knew we would be born in the previous century. God knows exactly the circumstances and changes that will take place in our lifetime. And God designed a purpose for our lives before we were born, correct? He will provide the teachers. He will provide the spiritual gifts, the passion, the abilities, personality, experiences, and logistics necessary to fulfill this purpose. This will be an island of stability at all times for every believer. Here is a question I would like to ask you. Can we miss God's purpose for our lives? The answer is absolutely. Now tell me, how can we miss it? The answer, we can miss it by unbelief, neglect, disobedience, rebellion, laziness, arrogance, etc. And that is the great tragedy of millions of people in America and billions around the world. Another question I would like to ask you. Can we get back on track after making bad decisions and waiting, wasting, I mean, years of our life? Absolutely. And that is the greatest challenge of our ministry. Isaiah 118, Jeremiah 15, 19, Romans 8, 28. But the most basic thing every believer should always be aware of and be prepared to use toward unbelievers is the doctrine of salvation. First of all, here is the cross representing the point of salvation. Just picture in your mind the cross. You see, Old Testament salvation was through faith in Christ. They looked forward to the cross by faith, just as today we look back to the cross also by faith. Salvation always has been and always will be through faith in Jesus Christ. As John 3.36 declares, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You see, the only difference between the Old and the New Testament salvation is where the individual lives historically with regard to the cross. Apart from that, there is no difference. There is only one Savior. Because there is only one Savior, then there is only one way of salvation. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. In Acts 4, 12, the Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Therefore, like I just said, since there is only one Savior, there is only one way of salvation. That one way of salvation is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith alone in Christ alone. Therefore, people were saved in the Old Testament exactly the same way they were saved in the New Testament, by believing in the finished, efficacious work of Jesus Christ on the cross. This is eternal life. When you are in union with Christ as a believer, then eternal life is imputed to you. And this imputation of eternal life is eternal family relationship with God. Principle. Once a member of the family of God, always a member of the family of God. Another question. How do we enter into a human family? 
The answer is by birth. And how do we enter into a spiritual divine family? The answer is also by birth. You see, it is very, or it is every single believer's responsibility to witness for Christ. The believer can witness for Christ either through his life or through his lips. When, as a believer, you witness for Christ, always remember this. Make the issue out of the issue and make the issue clear and get accurate doctrine. As a matter of fact, every believer is a missionary. Every believer has a spiritual ministry. Every believer is a salesman for Christ, carrying a perfect product, message of salvation. Why is it perfect? The answer is because it bears an eternal warranty. Do you know what? This product, which has an eternal warranty, is free. Did you hear me right? Free. Why free? Because someone has already paid it up for you. All one has to do is simply to accept it by faith. You see, in spiritual death, the divine solution is only by faith in Christ alone. Anything added to faith is a human solution. And salvation is not yours. Do you know why? Because faith accompanied by human works is invalid. The only valid faith is faith without works. You can have tons of religion without one ounce of salvation. If we could earn our salvation, Christ would not have died to provide it. Salvation, you see, is a gift to be received, not a goal to be achieved. No one is so good that he can save himself. No one is so bad that God cannot save him. Faith plus lordship, salvation. Faith plus commitment. Faith plus anything negates salvation. We are saved by grace through faith not of works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians 2.8 So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Acts 16.31 At the moment of salvation, God takes over and provides the believer 39 irrevocable things, plus one, the filling of the Spirit, spirituality. Man has his own breaking point in life. And all people are going to check out from this world in due time. You see, God's timing is what? Perfect. Respect man's volition whether he accepts or rejects salvation. That's his option. But he is answerable, accountable, responsible for every decision he makes. So don't ever try to control other people's free will, because you cannot. If you do, you are just wasting your time. The function of human volition is a divine design. This divine design is to appropriate what God commands and to reject what God prohibits. Rejection of Christ as Lord and Savior is a maladjustment to the justice of God. You see, there are three adjustments that man has to make with God. Salvation adjustment to the justice of God, rebound adjustment to the justice of God, and maturity adjustment to the justice of God. We are going to continue in this discussion tomorrow. Let us pray. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, we're going to spend the closing moments of our Bible study today without those without Christ, without 
eternal life without hope. The Lord Jesus Christ does not want to see anyone drink the cup of judgment. And there is only one way not to drink of that cup, and that is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only uniquely born Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, how can that be? How can that so simple lack of faith in which we receive salvation? Because God the Son on the cross received the imputation of all of our sins from God the Father. They were imputed to Him. And that means that every sin of every human being who had ever lived, your sins, my sins, and therefore, there is no barrier between us and God. All the barrier has been removed. There is no more sin between us and God. Our relative righteousness no longer matters. What matters is, what do you think of Christ? And so, we have a package. And that package is to be unwrapped. And the only way to do it is faith alone in Christ alone. By grace are you saved through faith. And that salvation is not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only thing that we have to boast of is the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, right where you sit right now, you can become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and secure your eternal future. It is as simple as saying, Father, I believe. Therefore, let us pray. And now, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your wonderful word, for the look into the past and the look into the future, and by it we know that you are God. We thank you for all that you have done for us, and we pray that we might not forget our past and our future. May we live our life in the light of eternity. Thank you for our Bible study through the YouTube. We ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.